Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. We're revisiting a little micro heli tonight, the eSky F150 V2. This is their little fixed pitched micro scale Bell 222 with the familiar black and white Airwolf color scheme. I did a review on this neat little micro heli a couple of years ago, and I'll put a link down in the description and up in the little card doodad if you wanted to take a peek at it. The reason we're looking at it again is YouTube's algorithm for some reason has started giving that initial review I did a lot of love over the past couple of weeks and with more eyeballs seeing it come more questions on it. So I thought I'd take the time to answer a few of them tonight and show you a solution to one of the most common questions I'm getting on the little airwolf here that is actually a common issue with lots of little ready to fly micro helicopters not just the 150 V2 and that is good old dreaded dead band. Dead band is basically a dead zone of control. You know where you're moving your control sticks and nothing's happening on your aircraft. It was so bad on this little micro that I mentioned in the video it would sure be nice if I could pair it to a computerized radio to hopefully fix or at least reduce it to an acceptable level. Obviously the questions that I'm getting stem from that comment I made. You know, can it be bound to a computerized radio? Yes it can. And if so, how do you fix the dead band problem? So let's get right to it and then go for a test flight so you can see how much better the control response is. Now I should mention this dead band fix will work for any micro heli that's experiencing it, but you need a computerized radio. So as you can see, it has bound up to uh, the OpenTX radio master here. So any OpenTX radio with a multi-protocol module, whether it's external or built in, this will work. Now this wasn't possible up to ooh, just a few months ago. I'm not sure the exact version of multi-protocol firmware, but uh, when I first tried this a couple of years ago, couldn't do it and uh, found out uh, this summer that uh, multi-protocol is now supporting the special firmware for the V2 versions of the 150, both the uh, little pod and boom version and of course the Airwolf here. So we're going to go into our model setup menu and scroll down to your RF selections. There we are. So we're using the internal RF module in the radio master here. And we want to be in the multi-protocol mode, of course. And we want to select eSky V2 and 150 V2. And this is a unique protocol that eSky has got that only works on the 150 V2s. And if you're wondering what version of multi-module firmware I've got, it's 1.3.1.77. And again, I'm not sure when multi-protocol firmware started supporting this protocol, but uh, it does now. And the only other thing to be aware of is the channel mapping order. Um, channel 1 is aileron, channel 2 is elevator, channel 3 is throttle, channel 4 rudder, and channel 5 is gear. That selects your stability mode. So basically uh, Futaba channel mapping order. So let's get into the dead band fix. Like I said, it's not just the little F-150 V2 here that experiences this dead band problem. Most little ready to fly micros will have it to some extent. This certainly is by far the worst one I've ever experienced. But the reason they all have it uh, is you know most of them come with little cheapy radios that have got really poor stick centering. So they have to program in an area of dead zone in the flybarless system or flight controller if you want to call it that to ignore any of that slop around center stick. Of course then when you do pair them to a good computerized radio that does have good stick centering you'll find you have to move the stick, move the stick and boom it'll take quite a while before the helicopter will respond. So how do we cure that? Well, one way a lot of people would think is to use exponential with OpenTX negative exponential. But let's have a look at that and see what's wrong with it. So I'm just going to go into we'll go into my aileron exponential setup. And as you can see, I've got positive 50 here. But what you'd want to do is you'd want to dial in a bunch of negative. So a little bit of stick movement will give you a massive amount of output. Now that will certainly eliminate the dead band, but I think you can see what the problem is. As soon as you have passed that zone of dead band, you've got massive amounts of movement, of control movement, super aggressive. And then when you're past half stick, 
it shallows right out and you basically will have almost zero control. So that is not an ideal solution. So what I do, instead of using exponential, I will actually create a special dead band eliminating curve. So let's go into our curves. Now, just ignore these throttle curves. You'll be wondering, well, why are you using throttle curves on a fixed pitch heli? I use the same base heli setup for all my models and then I modify them. So when I'm with this little fixed pitch heli, yeah, I'm not using a bunch of different throttle curves. I'm just using a linear one. So just ignore these other ones. But here's my dead band eliminating curve. And we'll just go into this. So it's just a simple four point curve. I've got four points, a low point, two middle points, and a high point. And you can kind of see that I'm emulating a little bit of what negative expo does. I'm giving it lots of output just off center stick, but then I've got a nice linear output. So what I've got here for the upper and lower um, points are plus and minus 10. And you're just going to have to experiment with that for your specific helicopter. You know, if you've got tons of dead band, this number is going to be higher. If you don't have much at all, you can dial that number down. And you'll also notice I've got these points just offset from center a little bit by four points. I just found that eliminated a little bit of dead band that this radio already has in it. It just helped a bit. You don't need to do that though. If you wanted to keep these both at zero, you probably wouldn't notice any difference. So any little bit of stick movement, you're going to immediately start getting movement right away and you're eliminating that uh, area of dead band that the fly barless systems got built in. And we can watch, we can see on the helicopter how much more precise it is. So hopefully you can see this, but uh, as soon as I start moving the stick, you get movement. And before it didn't do that, you know, I'd be moving, 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 and then it would finally respond. Now having a little bit of dead band, some people like it. So like I said, experiment with that plus minus 10 value on that curve. And I'll just show you where I've got that curve set up in the radio. You just have to make the one curve. And like I said, I use this for aileron elevator and rudder. So we will just get out of here and we'll go into our mixes. And you can see beside each mix for aileron, elevator, and rudder, I've got that special DB curve, dead band curve. So once you make your curve, normally you'd probably, this would be at diff, you would just go to custom, and then you would select which curve you want to use. And it's the dead band curve. And I have done that, again, for all for my aileron elevator and rudder channel. I'm using the dead band curve. And if we wanted to see on outputs what this looks like. So you, I'm just, here I'm going to zoom out. So I'm just giving a little bit of stick movement and you can see it automatically climbs really quick. And then it gets quite, then it's just a nice linear response. And what's nice about using that uh, custom output curve to eliminate the dead band is you can still use dual rates. Rates, rates. So you'll still get immediate movement off of center stick, but then you'll have you know reduced rates if you want. You can use ex positive exponential if you want to calm down uh, movement off center stick. I want consistency. I want all my helicopters to respond roughly the same off-center stick. Same with rudder here, just a little bit of stick movement, boom, you're already at 10% plus or minus, and then it's nice and linear after that. Let's fly the helicopter. Okay, let's see how she goes here. So yeah, it's way more responsive you can fly it 
a lot calmer if you want. Not his hands off pretty much. So super stable little guy. That was cool. It actually got sucked into the ceiling. <laughs> I'm just going to turn my dual rates off. See, it's nice and responsive for a little fixed pitch micro anyway, but it doesn't have that same robotic feel that it did with the stock radio and all that dead band. You, know, you give it a little bit of stick movement, it starts moving. You give it more, it's much more linear. So that's the advantage of getting rid of that dead band. That was a nice little flyer before, but now you can really appreciate it. Oh, well, the one other common question I've been getting on the little F-150 V2 as well is how is it holding up? And, you know, it's over two years old, and as you see, it still works, still looks great. Now, I don't fly this heli all that often. You know, it's a little micro, I'll fly it inside when I need an Airwolf fix. But, uh, you know, I've probably not even got a hundred flights on it yet. The tail motor's still working, hasn't burnt out or anything. And, you know, I don't fly it hard, it's a little micro scale ship, so, yeah, it's, it doesn't see hard use. And hopefully the tip on the dual rate Curve will help you with any other micros. I will use it on a few of these. The OMP Hobby M1 and M2, they benefit from it as well. Certainly bigger machines don't, but uh, if you've got a little micro, give it a try if you find you've got a lot of dead band. And uh, let me know what you think if you want to. Leave a comment below if you find the dead band curve gives you a better feel of the helicopter. Cheers folks, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.